Hello and welcome to another episode of how to build a compiler with LLVM and MLIR. This is Samir and let's get started. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the reader, the parser of the Serene language. As I mentioned in the earlier episodes, I assume that you are familiar with some of the basic concepts in the compiler world. So I'm not going to describe and explain uh, some of the things about parsers today, but just in case, let's go over a really brief overview of uh, what is a parser. To put it simply, a parser is a piece of code which reads the source code in textual format and creates a data structure out of it. We call that data structure an abstract syntax tree. Uh, there's so many different algorithms to create, a, to build a parser for different use cases. I'm not going to talk about them today, but I included a couple of links for you uh, as a self-study. Uh, it would be really good to know about how, like, at, at least the famous ones, but it's not mandatory. Because most of the time, you're going to use a library to create a parser, which we call a parser generator. Parser generators are quite common. Most of the languages are use them uh, and basically what you need to do to use uh, use a parser generator is to describe your language the different aspect of your aspects of your language in a type of a grammar different libraries expect you to write the grammar in different formats like bnf and things like that but you create the grammar you express your language in that grammar and you pass the grammar to the a parser generator and finally it generates a parser for you which parse a language in that grammar so they're, they're really good usually since um, they are battle tested and used in many different places the, the parser that that they generate are really good uh, and most of the generators can generate parsers in like using different algorithms. But in rare cases, you don't need to use a um, parser generator and Serene is one of those cases. Since Serene is a Lisp and it's a Lisp language, the source code is already in like, when you write a Lisp language, you are actually filling out a data structure. So your source code is already well struct, right? So you don't need to go over uh, some of the like steps before you need to parse the language. Like you don't need a lexer really. You can just, since there's a structure already in place, you can start parsing it into a AST, into an AST. So that's what we're doing in Serene as well. We don't have a lexer. We loop over the input just once. The algorithm that we're using is quite simple. It's just the LL 1.5. The 1.5 is kind of a joke, but basically how it works is that we start from the outer left character, which is the first one, right? We read one character at a time and the 0.5, like 1.5 is because sometimes you have to read two characters ahead. So in average, it would be 1.5. And we just loop over the uh, entire source code and decide how to parse it. That's it, right? The time complexity of our parser is at best O-N and at worst O-2-N. And it's at, at, at the moment, at this stage, it's not fully completed yet. It parses all the things that we need for the wiring of the compiler. So if you remember from the uh, previous episode, the, our aim is to wire up a compiler with the, a set of minimal features that just compiles a source code to a um, target code, right? So 
we are missing many many uh, useful features for a language but that's okay we're going to add them little by little in the future so let's uh, see the source code and talk over the implementation If you remember from the earlier episode, we talked about the, the source tree structure of Serin. So we have a directory called reader in Serin inside the include directory that contains the header files for the reader namespace. The parser contains two major pieces. One is the location related stuff and the second one which is the most important one is the parser itself so let's go over the location really quick we have two data structures here one is location and the other one is uh, location range basically what location does is, like, is to point to a specific point in the source code for example when we uh, parse the source code we specify the location of each uh, expression in the source code using the location structure and the location range is just a wrapper for location so it contains two locations one the uh, one is a start and the other is the end the location range we we mostly use the location range over uh, direct location because an expression in Lisp starts from a specific location and ends in, in an, a specific location as well. So it makes sense to know the range instead of just the starting point. We don't want to fall back to parsing the source code again when we want to raise an error or something like that. There's like couple, uh, several uh, useful, <coughs> sorry. There are several useful um, functions, actually a couple of them, which are quite simple. Increase the location and decrease the location. Ink location, dec location. Increase location moves the location, the, the given location, which we pass it by reference here, by one. And decrease location does the same thing but obviously decreases the location by one. We use these two functions in, in the parser to keep track of where we are in the source code. Um, I don't, uh, let's have a uh, look at the implementation as well. I don't think it's necessary, but just in case. So as you can see, the important the most important pieces are those two functions and they're quite simple they just keep track of the new line and increase the line counter and column co counter same goes for the uh, decrease location as well okay now let's go to the important part important header file sorry the reader.h the main in, uh, entry point of the reader so basically we have a reader namespace inside the serine namespace which yeah that contains a reader class reader class is uh, the base it's not a base class but we have two parser at the moment two, two readers at the moment one reads from a string the other one reads from a file uh, the reader reads from the string from a stream of a string the current character obviously stores the current character that we are parsing at the moment i just use the initial value which is kind of useless as a comma uh, sorry as a comment input stream obviously the input source code that we need to parse by the way i i just realized that i'm using a snake cases for 
uh, variables name here but since we uh, wrote the parser long ago we didn't go by the style guide we changed our style guide to use the llvm like um, coding a style we have to use something like a camel case which starts with a, a lower case uh, word for the variables names but it's okay for now i would probably change it in the future um we have a function called uh get care which as you can guess it just reads the next character and returns it the most important thing about the red care, uh, get care is that if we pass a skip white space as true it's going to skip all the white spaces till it gets to the next character on get uh, care basically unreads the current character why because sometimes we need to go back and provide the uh, kind of let the reader function to read that character we, we, we will get to that uh, in a bit another uh, function here is is valid for identifier that is quite simple it just gets a character check whether it is a valid character to be used in a symbol if it is return true otherwise false ast again simple enough this is the actual output of our uh, reader which we are going to return eventually so here's the important part we have four different functions we call them reader functions each of them reads an a specific type of expression from the source code and creates a node what is a node i'm going to show you in a bit but it's an abstract node in our ast tree um the public interface of this class is quite simple create a reader and set the input sometimes we don't have the in input when we want to create the reader but that's not important for now oh by the way if you don't know what a string ref is you need to take a look at llvm documentation there's a there's a long section on i can't remember the name but basically they describe the different utilities and different types that llvm provides for like ease of programming a string ref is one of them quite useful just like a reference on a string uh, but make sure to check out that documentation uh, page i'm going to put a link somewhere on the screen um, for you later we have a read function which is the main uh, public function on, on the reader it parses the source code and returns a result of an ast what is a result and what is a uh, ast type i'm going to talk about that um, briefly uh, in a couple of minutes and finally to a string that is quite uh, obvious I need to change the name here actually to dump instead of to a string because to a string kind of um, imply that it has to return a string but it in fact writes into the std app so it's not a good name I have to change it to dump actually let's do oops yes Let's do this just for future reference and another class which works on the same uh, kind of works in the same way as the a reader is file reader that uses the reader uh, the reader class internally but just reads from a file rather than an input string same interface doesn't matter we didn't use any abstract class or anything we just 
because just there's just one uh, public function we don't want to uh, I didn't want to uh, bother with abstract classes and stuff like that also um, the one one other important function is the read function it's it's not a member function just a function on its own and I consider the this function as the public and this sole uh, in, uh, entry point to the reader at this stage. Later on, I'm going to write uh, uh, write more uh, read functions that get different types as the input. But for now, since we all uh, we just want to stick with the minimal set of features, this is enough, right? So let's take a look at the implementation. Where is it? Here. Okay, move to the top. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to skip over some of the uh, obvious implementations and just talk, talk over some of the less obvious ones. Set, set input is quite simple. Give it a string, give it a, like a input a string. It, it's going to do some initialization and set it, set that a string as the input a string. Set the current location to unit. Unit is just like the initial location, which is zero, zero, zero. Remove the previous AST if, if there is any. And finally, create an input stream out of the input stream. Get car again in a loop. We read a character from the input string. Uh, sorry, input stream. Set it as the current character. Increase the location by one with respect to the end of the line. Uh, since I'm on a Linux environment, I hard coded the end of the line here, but we have a to do to respect the OS end of line. And if skip white space was true, is true, and the character is a space, ignore it, move to the next character, otherwise return the character. On get uh, carry is quite obvious as well. Decrease the location again with respect to the end of line and just put the character back into the uh, stream. Is valid for identif uh, identifier is like really simple. It doesn't need to talk over it, talk about it. So before we talk about the reader functions, we have to start from um, read expair. Where is it here? Yeah. So the member function read expair basically is a dispatcher function. It reads one character from the input. It doesn't escape over the white spaces and it put it back immediately because in some cases we need the reader function to read the first character. Like for example, a symbol. If I put a comment here, let's say blah. Blah is a symbol, right? If we read the first character and pass the rest to the uh, reader function, then it's going to end up with la. But we need to put it back so it can read the actual la. That's why we unget it immediately. But it doesn't happen all the time. For example, in case of a list, we don't have to read the first character. Okay, so we look at the uh, uh, character that we just read. If it was an open parenthesis, call the read list to read a list. If it was the end of file, return null pointer. Uh, null pointer. The node is like a shared pointer. I'm going to sh show it to you uh, later on. And otherwise, read symbol. Quite easy, really simple. In in the future, when we want to add, I, I don't know, vector maps and different pieces of the language. We're going to expand this switch case into more cases, uh, check for different uh, characters here and call the appropriate uh, reader function. 
but for now it's quite simple let's start with the read simple uh, read symbol because it's uh, the easiest one in my opinion basically um we can think of numbers as symbols as well but they have a different semantics right that's why we need to uh be careful here we read we read the first character if it was a valid identifier a character for our uh, identifier we continue otherwise we show an error and just exit by the way i know this is nasty uh, we don't have a uh, i don't know what to call it like a error system at the moment but that's uh, next in line to be implemented when we implement that piece i'm going to change all the uh, simple errors that we use here it should be like more elegant and it should have like a nice representation at least so if the first character was a dash so it might be a number right it might be a like a negative number we check for uh like the next character in line so we read two ahead of time and if it was a number indeed we call we will call the read number function i'll get to that later again if the first character was a number go read a number otherwise create a location range and sorry set the starting point at the current location read the entire sequence in a loop and if it wasn't empty create a symbol out of it so this line is kind of important here right uh, i zoomed out a lot so it breaks when i <laughs> when some hints uh, has to be shown on the screen but anyway this is how we create nodes in our uh, ast the symbol class from experts is a class representing symbols in our ast it gets a location almost yeah all of not almost like all of the uh sorry all of the expression classes gets a location as this uh, first argument and the rest is different based on the class based on the type basically so what happens here the make function acts as the main entry point to the ast it creates a node for you but it gets the type of node that you want uh, to create for example at this in this case we want to create a symbol node and then we pass the symbol name from this like we read it from the source code and pass it to the uh, constructor of symbol class and since uh, reader functions has to return a node and make creates a node if you see the uh, if you look at the description on top right of the screen you can see that it returns uh, make returns a node on, uh, itself otherwise uh, we need to return a null pointer and as i mentioned in the to do it should never happen happen but uh we have to take care of that later it's not important at this uh, at this stage now let's have a look at read number okay uh just like any other uh reader function it returns a node gets just one uh parameter which indicates whether we, we're reading a negative number or a positive number um i don't think um, yeah yeah we take care of uh, float here as well we read the string uh, we read the number as a string with, with some location attached to it and then we do some checks whether uh, to find out whether it's a float or not uh, things like that and finally here we create a we create a number a node out of the string that we just read sorry and again null pointer 
if it wasn't uh, the case with it which it shouldn't happen we take care of that in the future and finally read list function this one is a little bit different because we create the uh, node first with the current uh, current location attached to it as an empty list so make and cast while the make function the experiment main function returns a node make and cast creates a node but casts a casts that node into the given type so list here would be an actual list instead of a node list is st uh, still is a node but we since we uh, cast it to a list we can use different uh, member functions of the list here okay i have to make another to do here we shouldn't use hazard to be honest uh, oops replace the because um, hazard is just debug only and it won't m make it to the to the release uh, build so it would be pointless to check uh, to have this check here in an hazard form we have to have an actual check and fail uh, if it was uh, the first character is not an open parenthesis so what happens here is we read a uh, character if it, uh, it if it was the end of line it means that we reached the end of line while we were parsing an open list so it never closed the user never closed the list so it's a, a problem it's an error we have to rise and uh, and if the character was a closed parenthesis it means that okay we just uh, finished with reading the list let's create a list and return it and if it wasn't if the character wasn't any of those two let's read another expression and append it to a list so a list is basically a sequence of expression di expressions different expressions right a list itself is an expression so nested lists or still expressions uh, we read the next expression by calling the read expert reader function and append the node to the list itself so basically we keep doing it until we reach the point that we see and uh, see a closed parenthesis and at that point we just return the node right easy peasy it's it might seem a little bit complicated, but it's not really. So that was the in, kind of the entire reader beside the read functions. The read function is the most important one. And yet it's like quite simple. What we do here is to get a character, skip the, uh, skip the white spaces, check for the end of the line, if it wasn't the end of the line, just read the first expression and push it to the AST. This AST here, if you remember, is a member uh, member attribute in the reader class. So what we, uh, we're doing here is until we get to the end of the line, we get to the end of the line, we read an expression, push it back to the AST, and at the end, create a result out of it. What is a result? Result were um, I'm going actually I'm going to show you sh show it to you. It's uh, quite nice to know about the result at this stage. But for now, before I show it to you, just uh, think of it as a successful result, which contains the actual result. Okay. Um, To a string is uh, qu uh, quite easy as well. 
each of the nodes in our AST uh, have a function to represent themselves as a string. We loop over the AST and basically call that to a string function on each node and print it out uh, somewhere. Do -do. Actually, hang on a second. Are we using the to string at all? Oh yeah, uh, this function is redundant. We need to remove it. Uh, now I remember that I added another function to do this. It's not important at all. We can get rid of this function entirely. Which I'm going to do after uh, I stop recording. Um, the read function on the file reader is kind of similar as well. The difference is it reads the implementation from a uh, reads the input from a file and create a reader out of it and call the read function on the reader class itself. Easy. Again, we don't need this one as well. Uh, we can remove it. The, uh, destroy is not uh, important. And finally, the main entrance, which is the read function creates a reader, re, uh, set the input, reads it, and return the AST. Sorry. Easy. Now let's have a look at the result first. It might be a little bit overwhelming, but basically what it is, it's if you are familiar with functional uh, programming, it's like a monad, like a uh, what does it call like a maybe monad, but it, it's a little bit different in implementation. Um, there's you can uh, read the comments here later on, but simply result is an object that gets two types. The first type is the type of the value that is it wants to hold when it's successful result. Otherwise, the second type is the type of the value that result needs to hold when it is not a successful uh, result. The implementation here is not that important, but basically we use a variant, which is like a union here. And then we have different implementation of uh, a different function that puts the different value in that union, like the success function uh, gets a value of type T, um, put it in the variant as the successful type, like the variant one, uh, sorry, zero, not one. And error is basically gets the second, uh, gets a input of type E and put it as the, as the second uh, type in the variant. So the implementation is kind of, it looks scary, but um, the fact is, it's a value of two types. It's either the type T or type E, and you can check uh, whether it holds a type, um, like which type it holds by calling the OK function or a basic Boolean, use it in a, like a if con as a if conditional. It will tell you which one it holds and you can get the actual value by calling get value or get error. Uh, like it, it can re return a reference or uh, a movable reference or whatever. Uh, that's the result part. And just to show you quickly what AST is and what node is. Oops, 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 oops. So AST and node are defined in the expert namespace. Uh, actually, my editor points to the wrong location. So let me show it to you, not here, manually. Okay. So in the expert uh, namespace, we have a expression class, which is an abstract class for all the nodes in the AST, uh, node itself is a shared pointer to an expression. Expression is an abstract class. So it can, it can be 
a number it can be a symbol a list or whatever thing that we have we have several more types in RASD that the reader doesn't know about them but the semantic analyzer knows about them I'm like we get to them later in the future and some other types for example maybe node is just a result type of node and error tree I, you, I just show you the result so the successful case would hold a node otherwise an error tree and AST is a vector of nodes simple as simple as that right also maybe AST is a, again a result of AST as a success case and error tree as the failure case it's quite simple but how our AST works that for another episode and not today so um let's go back to the reader here um, as you can see our reader is at, at this stage quite really simple we have some test cases for it in src sorry src tests reader and reader test cases you can see how we we might use the read function pass a string containing some ex expression it <clears throat> sorry it returns a maybe ast if it wasn't uh, a failure case we have to fail the test uh, otherwise we get the value by moving out the actual value from the maybe ast to ast and then do our testing uh, by the way, this to a string here refers to the to a string uh, method of the node and not the reader, um, just to make it clear. Um, have a look at the test cases. They're quite simple. There's not much because the um, reader is quite simple at this stage. It will show you how to use the reader on your own. Um, I wanted to show you one more thing. Oh, okay. So if we go to a terminal, so I didn't talk about the Serene C uh, file itself yet, just yet, because it contains some details that you shouldn't know at this stage. It's going to make you, uh, it's going to confuse you, but uh, just to show you how to use the reader. So you already know about the builder uh, script if i run the builder and pass it the run subcommand with emit the like i basically want to emit the ast so it would be like parse this input file as the AST and show me the AST. Uh, one more thing to know, since it's a, like a, we try to be as minimalistic as possible. Uh, we only support the full path at the moment. So that PW here basically gets the current working directory and attach the, the, like the rest to it. So if I just call this one, as you can see, it prints out the AST for us why it looks like this uh each of the nodes has a to a string function that converts the node the ast node into a like a string representation so for example this one is a symbol node that contains the name diff this one is a symbol node that contains the name uh, main and it goes on like this um this is how you can debug your AST if you uh, you decided to play around with the reader. This is how you can actually see uh, the AST on your uh, for your changes or for the uh, for your input. Also, there's one more thing to show you here. If you uh, provide a flag called uh, debug, oops, debug, yeah, it it will spit out all the logs and like yeah basically all the logs that we have in serene itself to help you debug your uh, issue uh, we might have different pieces different types of 
loggers in the source code that's why you can um, restrict it to just one type of logger for example debug only reader will show you the reader uh, log entries so as you can see it it says like what character it's reading in what function it reads a symbol read a symbol uh, reading a list things like that it can help you um, debug uh, the changes you might to make to the reader file also the last thing i want to talk show you is yeah the reader log so we define a macro called reader log that calls the debug with type of llvm and sets the type to reader this reader here is the one that we pass into the uh pass via the cli right uh as simple as that use this logger wherever you want later on we're going to strip it out from the release build and it's not that important at the moment so here you go that's the reader for you quite simple let me know if you have any question in the comments uh, or reach out to me directly um, finally if you find my work interesting or you're interested in this content please subscribe and please share your feedback i really like to have your feedback on uh, this video series thanks for sticking around and have a great day